Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Waking up for a little bit of an earlier Tuesday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Do want to wish you well. Do want to wish you the best, the best. I've eaten all the ground beef in the world, so <laughs> I'm good to go for some more analysis. Another pound down. So let's get into the live scene right over here. And Bitcoin, as always, or as recently, has been uh, moving while while I'm sleeping. Hopefully, if you're over, the, if you're awake in the uh, in the Western Hemisphere, you have been catching these moves. But we are catching a bit of a bid off of the uh, off of that uh, yellow 21 exponential support on the daily. Oh, and before I forget, my God, I keep on. <laughs> I keep on forgetting. Um, all of my programs are on sale for the rest of the month because it is the one-year anniversary of Crown's Crypto Cave. So 20% off on all the programs with the code. If I can bring it up over here. Come on, baby. Show me the money. Where is it? Where is it? Come on. There you are. There you are. With the year, with the code YEAR20, Y-E-A-R-20. Um, that that will get you 20% off on any plan, payment plan that, you know, we can, we can do a payment plan all the way from, you know, just one full-time payment all, all the way up to about 10 months, um, I believe, on just about every one of my programs. And I should actually probably explain them for just just a brief second over here as well as my message box continue to fill up. Basically, the Trade Like a Professional program is the all-encompassing technical analysis program that also includes market dynamics, risk and position management, and then, of course, multiple, multiple bonus modules plus access to the hidden uh, community discord and, of course, the two proprietary indicators. The Master Your Options program is similar to that, but with regards to understanding options, the derivative products options, and then the Jewel is quite literally just access to the to the Jewel indicators. So as there has been a lot of confusion about that, so I do want to just briefly touch on that and back on over here to the actual charts. Okay, cool. So, and of course, I do want to remind people, hey, if you're interested in my programs, understand that these are not applicable for most people. Most people do not need these. It's going to be complete overkill. You can probably just view my free materials. I have plenty of free playlists that will get you 99.9% .9 of the place that you want to be to. And I always want to say that because I don't have any intention to get the wrong people into a program like this. It is for the kind of person who wants to do this, typically in the stance of a living or trying to, you know, or, or trying to essentially move over into, into that venue. So... Again, I'll get off that topic now. Let's get on to the actual charts. That's a more fun thing. That's what you came here for. And as you can see, a nice bounce off the yellow 20 month exponential so far. Another wick down to 3,800 in the early morning hours. But of course, until that area actually officially breaks, I don't really have anything from a, from a medium time frame perspective changing until either 3,940 breaks the upside, or sorry, it's actually 3,930 as it is descending, or um, or 3,800, or sorry, it's actually 3,810 now breaks to the downside. I need to see that initiated on a higher level delta time frame, preferably a two hour or higher. So speaking of, let's go down to the lower time frames, and we can see just picking up a nice, a nice support right around here, right around that 3,800 number, uh, even. We put on um, horizontals. This horizontal was made on a higher time frame, I believe, is on the daily. So obviously, it's not gonna it's not gonna get play right here. But having a nice comeback off that, I'm gonna guess that all of the lower time frame oscillators are pointed up. And yes, they are. We have uh, we have two hours uh, pointed up right here. We have uh, hourly uh, headed up as well. Um, so again, where's the next resistance coming in on this guy? Well. It wouldn't. It certainly would not be out of question to retest the broken support of this prior ascending broadening wedge that would be coming in somewhere around 3875-ish area. But keep in mind, you know, these very low time frames that we're looking at right here—the hourly, two-hour, and, and especially anything below that—it's just the madness time frames. Um, I don't put all that much. I, I don't put all that much respect on the supporting resistances in this area. Really, when we're coming into a massive, massive consolidation, as we've been looking at on the higher time frames, it's the it's it, it's really those higher time frames that I want to be respectful towards. And again, I want to reiterate, thirty nine thirty to the upside. 3,800 to the downside. Whichever one breaks first, that's going to be your new your your new medium term direction. If you break up to the upside, I'd be looking at a quick move to about 4,200 a share. If we break to the downside, I would be looking at a quick move to about 3,650 ish, uh, 30, 3,600 even. Um, for now, just fucking around this range. Yeah, uh, you know, you can certainly scalp it. But uh, now we are going to be having bifurcation be th between the very low time frame oscillators and the medium time frame, which if we can switch on over here to the six hour, we will see that six hour stokes are still headed healthily down. They got plenty of room to go. We got eight hour right here. Same thing, just even more. Ten, uh, 10 hour right here, just getting out of the bullish control zone for the first time in a while. First time in a couple weeks, actually. And uh, 12 hour, same sort of thing as well. In fact, the 12 hour has been getting some pretty good stokes signals in the more critical zone for both sides uh, whenever it's crossed um, to the downside from all the way above the 80 marker that actually has called a bunch of tops in the past um, in the past year or so uh, in the you know it, it, of the more flighty price action and same thing for the for the lows actually as well it has it has had a good track record and yes we are crossing down but of course how many one hours can you fit into a 12 hour well 
12. <laughs> so again, uh, the, you know, my point is that a lot can, you know, we, we could have a nice rally up in the, uh, on, on the hourly time frame, maybe make it, make it all the way up to 3,900 and then turn back down from there and still be in confluence with the, with, you know, with the, with the 12 hour, of course, 12 hour RSI, I would say is bearish right now is trending below the exponential is going is just essentially also to between the neutral zone and the bearish control zone typically not the best sign. Um, daily is going to be the same sort of thing, actually. Uh, daily has officially lost the exponential right here, um, continuation from yesterday. But, you know, again, it's I, I really don't want to make it any more complicated than it needs to be between, again, 3,800 and 30, 3,930. Uh, daily stokes are still headed up. Um, they are, you know, I mean, I was going to say they, they, they are looking like they're losing a little bit of momentum, but I think that that's really splitting hairs right there. Not really too appropriate. Um, what's really more visually apparent is the two-day, the higher time frames which we can actually see the two day stokes uh did have a chance to cross the upside yesterday with the close yesterday at 7 p.m eastern time now obviously that did not happen because there was a little bit of a bear attack i mean a very small you know 20 bucks down but that's enough to avoid uh, avert a, what the hint was to the upside on this guy um which to me is a big deal it's actually a big deal as bitcoin actually charges up charges up a little bit a little bit more but tell me that hey Overall, we are getting respected in that way, and you can see the two-day stokes um, more neutral than anything I would say. I mean, people would tell you that this is bearish. I'd, I'd say it's probably a little bit more neutral. Um, overall, you know, I am bearish. I, I don't want to make it sound that I'm not, uh, you know, I'm going to be bearish in a bear market, but when looking at something like this, it is, you know, the uh, ju uh, judging this next kind of like couple weeks of movements is just really going to hinge on where we break out of on that daily time frame. Anything else is just mental masturbation, which is good to do. It's good to do. It, it, it prevents blue brains. But, you know, it's just that I, I want to see price action first. This is one of those scenarios where price action and only price action matters to me. However, we can go over and look at the three-day stokes. These have been pretty damn good as well. Crossing down, rejecting the more bullish control zone, as you can see. And uh, the last few times it actually has crossed down, uh, it has created a nice trend line coming down all the way over here. Now, that is originating all the way from December of 2017, funnily enough. Which, if you remember that, that was the run to 20,000 uh, right over here. So going back into these three-day stokes, uh, this has been getting highs pretty damn well. This was, your, well, this was obviously your high at 20,000. This was your high at 10,000 in May of last year before it headed down to 6,000. This was your high in August of last year at 8,400 before it heading down to 6,000. And then once again, we've actually, you know, gotten up to this trend line, tested it, and turning down. So does this become the next high of this consultant? Jesus Christ, these these charts are so convoluted right now. Uh, does this become the next high before we before we move on down um very possibly uh again there are a lot of resistances coming around this area not only we're looking at the three-day stokes turning down right there but more importantly going back to the daily what's coming in around this area the 89 exponential which is 39 30 which is also these nice ho uh, horizontal trend lines coming in all the way back from originating from uh, november of last year late november last year also the 236 but not true tracement as you can see and if we start to go over to the higher time frames that's where, where it becomes a uh, very 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 apparent that there is even more significant resistance this is coming around this area. We have the 10 simple moving average on the two week total time frame, which has been holding back price action pretty much from that same sort of late 2017, early 2018 area that we looked at on the three day stokes coming in right around here. Uh, that was the last time that we actually lived above it, both opening and closing above it. And as you can see, where is it coming in right now? 3,900. So again, within the range, doesn't even perfectly uh, aligned with 3,930, but we can just see, we can just say and see that there are, there's, there's, there's a nice range. There's a nice block in that territory. Not only that, but with the, with with the monthly, we can also see that the monthly 50 exponential is coming in right around where? Right around 3880. That We have broken it for the first time in Bitcoin's history, by the way. Uh, in December of last year, we bounced off of it in November. Yeah, then formally broken in December have been and have, and have been unable to get back above ever since then, uh, putting in a one, two, three weeks above. So looking at this guy uh, coming in about 30 bucks higher than current price, sorry, 40 bucks higher than current price action, uh, I would still be respectful of this as resistance until told otherwise. And again, that will be initiated and probably first and foremost spoken on the daily if we can break above 39.30. So that is the significance and why I keep on going back to the daily because it has carryover and rollover to all these other higher time frames, which... The monthly is very, 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 very powerful. And when I look at the monthly, I look at this as consolidation, just like I look at it. You know, I think it's very apparent on the two week as well. This looks like consolidation. Look at the volume signature. Look at the price structure. Let's go to the three day. The same sort of thing. Look at the price structure. Look at the volume signature. They are very, 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 very remarkably that of consolidation. I mean, you look at this and really 
it, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're forming some sort of, uh, some sort of triangular consolidation, which looks is what it looks like to me with a nice hunt right here is would be the more traditional way of looking at this and overall if this is going to be consolidation then i'm looking at you know these higher time frames to give me insight into where this consolidation is likely to be resolved i mean obviously coming off of a downtrend typically speaking it's going to you know it's going to imply continuation when you're when you're uh consolidating in a triangular fashion but looking at these two moving averages right here the yellow 21 and the green 55 crossing the downside that is telling me about the about that trend with respect to these to to the lower period moving averages right over here the 10 simple still holding things down does tell me that the pressure is onto the downside which you would expect, you know, coming off of a nice downturn like this. But anyways, as these two moving averages uh, diverge from each other, that's telling me that the that the trend is gaining more and more momentum to the downside, likely going to be the resulting factor in letting this consolidation being being full being finally resolved. Of course, the monthly same sort of thing. We have a, we have actually even, even an even more powerful cross on the way. As long as Bitcoin is below the 50 exponential again, right here at 3880 or a little bit above there, uh, I look at the red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential, and they're they're approaching each other. They are they have very negative slopes, especially the 10 simple, and are and is hinting at across the downside, which is going to again intensify the algo and bot selling on those uh, on those programs. So. That is the story at hand for the higher time frames. Of course, we, you know, if, if you're trading the higher time frames, you don't you don't make a trade for like, <laughs> it's you don't make a trade like you, you make a trade like once every few months. Um, so let's go back to the hourly and see what we got. Uh, we are right at the 200 exponential right here, but I do think that we take it out. I do think that we can work our way higher. Um, I think that we're going to see. I, I really want to see Stokes back get back up to the uh, to the 60 marker on um, on the hourly, and that's where I want to see pressure once again applied. If the bears are going to take full control, but um, you know, where does that put spot charts at? You know, maybe 38, uh, 70, or may, may, maybe even a full run to 3,900. That's where I'd be looking for trades right now. I do not have any open trades. I've been sleeping during <laughs> during the time when Bitcoin's actually been moving, which is very frustrating. Um, but I will be looking to put on an options positions pretty damn soon. By the way, the options beginner tutorial, which again is completely free, um, is fully complete now. And actually, the last video is a video from the actual options program itself with, uh, with one of the strategies. Of course, it's one out of literally 52 videos. So you probably need more context to fully understand it but it'll give you an idea um and actually you know just one of those things uh, one of those strategies that everyone uses i mean no matter what level you are uh it's pretty integral so again check that out if you are interested in learning options but i'll be looking to put on some sort of a spread uh, probably around here probably around, uh, anywhere around 38 uh, 70 3900 that's what we uh that's what be aiming, aiming my cannons right now um, anyways, going over to the four hour, we haven't really checked on the four hour and yeah, four hour showing resistances in the same area that we currently are in, but four hour stokes will be crossed up. I think that that is the lowest, sorry, that is the highest time frame that's actually crossed up. Maybe the five hours as well. No, it's not. It's actually healthily below. So again, four hour, uh, typically I don't like trading against the four hour stokes. Um, and this would, you know, likely have implications for getting back in and testing the blue box territory. I'd imagine uh, four hour jewel is also well, no, sorry, it's it's not it's not getting overdone. It is nowhere near getting overdone. Actually, did to just break below this uh, support, which is not good. Uh, four hour um, RS actually retesting the exponential, so we probably do bounce off this area for now. But I wouldn't be surprised if we do wake our, work our way higher, you know, over the rest of the day or tomorrow or, or whatever it might be. My point is, is I don't have a strong opinion on what we do in the very low time frames. I don't think that that is what real technical analysis is about. Real technical analysis and trading is about finding good setups that have good risk reward potential and then understanding that you know nothing is 100% going to work out ever it's a game of, of of putting in those statistics on your side in your favor and then over time you can make them work for you that's where this that uh, uh, that I've seen it done I haven't I've never seen anyone like get everything right but um what I could say is that I probably uh, you know I like I don't have a strong opinion of what we do. I mean, if I had to say something, I do think that we I, th I do think that we rally back up and test this area, um, and that's where I'm going to be looking trades for. More importantly, but I, I I don't you know whether we break below 3800 or, or or test this area first, that's irrelevant to me. Those are both trade potentials. So if we were to break 3800, you know, officially, and when I say break it, I mean close like a two hour total below it. Uh, at the very least, I mean, preferably for a level like this with so many eyes on it. I mean, maybe even a higher time frame, like a four hour. Uh, I mean, really a daily is what you should be doing it on, but not not what you should be doing on. But, of, you know, it's not fun advice, not a financial advisor, but if I had more patience, that's what, that's what I'd be using. Um, but, uh, but, 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 but again, my point is. If I can stop stuttering, that would be even better. Uh, I know that's really fucking annoying. My point is, is that those are trade potentials, and right now we're kind of right in the midst of this range. You know, I don't, I don't really, 
I don't really there there's there's no real intent for me to take a trade right here. I don't I don't really see that much of a potential. Um, so yeah, by the way, back on to the discussion of the higher time frames. Not only did we see all the things that we wanted to see on the two week, the the monthly, the daily, um, and uh, and just about everything else, but also we go over here to the CMEs, which I think the CMEs chart is just so much easier to read. I mean, just looking at this with nothing else on, you can see very clearly we have lower highs all the way through. They did not get that same sort of rally um, over here that would that, that 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 made a slightly higher high. So to me, the CME chart is the predominant chart. It gets things most right. And that's very important because when we do have professional venues now trading Bitcoin and, and trading Bitcoin derivatives and all that kind of stuff, uh, I do think that they probably take the reins. Um, as this is going to be the most professional venue to actually trade on. Now, of course, does that mean that, you know, quant firms aren't trading on exchanges like BitMEX, Binance, fucking Derivit, whatever it might be? Of course they are. They are. And I know that for a fact. I mean, one of my friends is co-founder of a major exchange, or sorry, not major, but I should say medium term uh, firm in Chicago. And they, they've been on fucking BitMEX for as long as anyone here, I'd imagine. Um, so again, uh, you know, look, you know, uh, uh, understanding something like that. Yes, they are on, but the more professional investors who are running this um, will be on something like CMEs. And the fact is, is that weekend weekend action, I think, is just typically flighty. And when we did get that higher high over here in late February, that was done on a weekend because weekends typically, I, I think that less people are playing the game. That means that it's easier to kind of cause some flighty price action and uh, hunt people out, stop people out and uh, trap people. And that's exactly what we've seen so far. That is the right way to be interpreting these charts. Again, you know, when CMEs were getting towards that resistance before breaking out, you saw zero volume right here. Zero. There is no interest. And then, and then you know, opens up the week and, and just pops back down. Whereas uh, on spot, you know, you, you did see it on very low volume just kind of float up to this level. Anyways, uh, while we're here, yes, we are actually hitting a resistance on this chart as well. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, five steps at the overall overhead resistance going all the way back from late November. Also, the 382 Fibonacci retracement, by the way, coming around this level. So just another thing, a green that we do have resistance in this area, which... You know, again, it works until it doesn't, and that would be currently at around, currently coming in around about 3,900. So again, that that same 3,900 level, popping up, uh, popping its head into every little which way. And Bitcoin's actually rallying up just a little bit more, 3,852 now. And there we go. I think that we are going to get this rally extended, like uh, like we said earlier. Um, so yeah, you know, also on daily right here, we do have daily stokes actually situated up. So they are catching wind of the more bullishly controlled zone. So that does tell me that we probably do get another test in this area. Um, if we go down to the lower time frames, I'm curious what they're saying. Uh, four hour stokes are getting down there. Um, not turning just yet. What about the hourly? Um, come on, baby. Load that chart. Oh, Bitcoin actually rounded a little bit more. There we go. 3865, I can see. Uh, Jesus Christ, man. It's like this is not the right time to be frozen. Trading view, you bastard. Uh, let's go over here to uh, spot that. That loaded perfectly. All right. So, yeah, th I would consider this a test, a, a retest of this trend line right here. Uh, besting on perhaps a two hour. Oh, man. This is so, this is so frustrating. It is being so slow right now. I, I apologize about this, guys. I really do. Um, Oh, man, come on, you fuck. You piece of shit. You piece of shit. Huh, maybe I do want to get into my... Yeah, I'm checking my other account on my other screen, and um, I am tempted to take, to take a trade, but it would be great if TradingView could actually uh, load. All right, let's try this. We're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. Come on, baby. Don't fuck me now. Do not fuck me. Come on, baby. Just want to see this. So <laughs> I just I just need to see some goddamn price action. Come on. There we go. Load your piece of shit garbage. Okay, cool. Sorry for my autistic rages. I do apologize about that as well. There we can go. That's what I'm looking for right there. A retest of this trend line. Probably going to bounce off on first pass. And now the game begins. Now, where is Derbit? Derbit is trading a few bucks higher. Could I still get in on there? Uh, you know what? Maybe I, maybe I do. Uh, hold on. Let me, uh, let's go. Let's try this. Um, okay, so yeah, you know, again, if, if it takes out this level right here, 38, uh, basically basically the high that we just put in, 38.65, I would be looking for that move into the 3900, so low 3900s, back into the blue box territory. But for now, just a retest of this um, of this broke support trend line of that ascending brawny wedge, which already hit its measure move as far as I'm concerned. A lot of people are looking at this um, ascending brawny wedge and saying that the measure move is, is pointing you all the way down to like 37.50 or, or even below there. I don't believe that that's the right way to be doing it. Um, I, I believe it's already been hit. 
again, it's the it's it's the daily that uh, that we really need to be watchful of right now for the overall uh, medium term directions, which is which is going to be a massively confluent point with regards to flowing over into our high time frames as we've seen as we've spent the whole uh, initial point of this. Um, of this uh, stream looking at. Anyways, uh, let's get on over to GBDC. What did he do in the overnight session as well? Looking at GBDC, um, yeah, sold off, sold off all yesterday. Uh, Tests and supports right around 462. But again, it's, it's not until we actually break 462 on a daily where at that point, I just don't see too much holding up from, you know, perhaps even testing all the way down to 420-ish area. Great number as well. Um, but we do see a different chart going on in here. Still uh, essentially double topping from the last high at 42, as you can see. Um, but really not too much else to be said about this guy. Uh, daily stokes are looking a little bit tired. Uh, it's going to completely depend on whether we open up uh, up or down today. If we do open down, then yes, they will confirm a cross down. If they do open up, then un then I think that I think it would be unlikely to. I think that they will unravel themselves. Um, so it's going to be a long day until, uh, until those open back up again but hey we do have bearish divergence on the daily which is certainly very powerful and i would be looking for this to actually have some more carryover so overall if i was just looking at gbdc now i would be saying that i probably would be more bearish on this guy you do see that the daily rsi is just oscillating between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone for the last I mean, since since November of last year, I mean, shit, you could even go maybe all the way back over here. Shit, I mean, it, it's been a long time since I've even really stayed in the bullish control zone. Look at this. Uh, each and every time that it's, that it's given a try, it's been rejected and now printing divergences around this area. Uh, Daily Jewel is actually per, perhaps giving some resistance right here. Again, not a full signal, certainly nowhere near a full signal, but... Uh, we're going to have to see what we're going to see where the next tick is. That's going to be the next uh, uh, key to the puzzle or or whatever the fuck <laughs> whatever whatever insert saying here that that suggests that um but yeah if we do turn down i would be looking for initial support at 450 but i, I think that that'll likely get blown through and we probably do see a move down all the way to about 420 ish area which would put spot charts somewhere around 35 uh 50 35 3500 something like that given the current premium um i i do think it'd be around there which would be quite significant quite significant as that's that would be about 300 bucks from our current posturing um anyways i do want to go back to the cmes and see if we can load that uh, that hourly dildo chart and there we go okay so cmes i do have a trend line in right here and we're actually perfectly retesting that right now at around uh, 38 uh, 45 so not bad not bad at all um but i'm curious what are medium time frames doing in this guy and yeah four hour okay we did look at the four hour. they're still coming down the see hour that are coming up and again if we do pop back up i would be looking for resistance right around about 38 uh 85 so, uh, so somewhere right around here 3900 which would put spot charts again right around that 3900 level that's what i'd be looking for um okay cool anyways uh let's go look at the longs and shorts right now longs and shorts Still in favor of the longs, but just barely. They have converged on each other quite a bit. We are 22 and a quarter uh, open longs on Finex versus 20 and a half thousand open shorts on Finex. Long still paying a little bit more of a rate, but neither of these are high at all. Uh, we have three and a half thousand uh, shorts hedged, so we really have about 17 and a quarter um, open naked, which does create a much more, a uh, much greater imbalance, no doubt about that. But uh, my big point with this is the point that I've been making for the last few weeks, and actually shorts on shorts real time on Finex are actually a little bit higher. They're, they're, almost, they're approaching 21,000 now. Um, more importantly though, more importantly, each and every time that the shorts, that the total shorts have gone into this red box territory, major dumps have occurred. Just like we looked at on, on our, on our uh, three day also, it's just like we looked at on our daily, just like we looked at on all the uh, higher time frames. Uh, the same sort of areas emerging where this stab down into, um, into the red box territory in February of last year, that was your double top at 12,000 before heading down to 6,000. This was your, sorry, this was your top at 10,000 before heading, out, heading down to 6,000. This was your top at 8,400 before heading down to 6,000. This was your top at 6,000 before heading down to 3,000. And then once again, we got in this range and now we are digging ourselves out more importantly. And you'll notice that once, when you enter the red box territory and then you leave it, that's where the dump does emerge from. I mean, you know, obviously, <laughs> uh, I think that's probably pretty intuitive. Um, but my point is, is that if we are going to see that same trend emerge, I would want to... I would want to see it happen relatively soon emerging from this red box territory while the while the underlying market, di market dynamics are still in favor of, of, of the bears right now because of the imbalance between the longs and the shorts. Although, albeit the, the imbalance is not as impressive as it was before. Um, so again, 
that is that is what I'm looking for right here. Not only that, but looking at the crypto fear and greed index, we can quickly see that we're actually greedy once again today. Um, but I guess that makes sense. We haven't really broken the range one way though, so it's not not no, it's not a huge reason for people to feel you know be be on one major side. Um, but again, you know the big thing with this guy, and make let me make sure that you guys can actually see this. Oh, whoops, sorry about that. Let's scroll him down. Oh man, that doesn't work either. How about uh, right in the middle? Can we get it like Malcolm? There we go. Beautiful. Just perfect enough. Uh, as my head is cut off as well. But uh, each and every time that the, the, that the Crypto Fear and Green Index over the past year has gotten above 50, that has been your topping areas. Um, again, this was your top at 12,000 in February of last year. This was your top at 10,000 in May of last year. This was your top in August at 8,400 last year. This was your top at 6,000 you know, 6, before heading down to 3,000. And once again, we're, we're actually more greedy than we were at those, at those points in times. So looking at some like this it does make me think that uh it, it does make me think that you know that has been the trend for the past year again in confluence with the longs and shorts in confluence with the higher time frames in confluence with the you know the two week the monthly the daily all of the other things that we've seen and i'm probably forgetting another thing i'm probably forgetting that uh we probably have some sort of volume profile coming around this area as well let's see What's uh, what's the volume profile showing? Yeah, volume profile showing that the uh, that the last kind of, that the that the last Mohicans of this resistance is is reliant around this thirty nine thirty ish area, and you can actually see the point of control coming in where perfectly at thirty eight hundred. So looking at something like this, what what what's more interesting to me is that if Bitcoin does break out of that thirty nine thirty ish area, um, don't see too much stopping you from you know forty one fifty forty two hundred, and then above there, I mean it's. You know, you're probably gonna hit some fib targets and, and all that stuff, and, and and introduce some algo uh, selling. But that's where things get a little bit more interesting. My personal opinion is that Bitcoin would probably break out to about 4350, 4400. But again, I'm not really leaning towards this happening. I'm I'm more leaning towards a downside because you know overall in a bear market, I'm gonna be bear. Um, so if 3900 does break to the you know to the downside, I would be looking somewhere down around here, around 30 you know 35, uh, 50, 3600 ish area. Um, and then of course 3400 of of the utmost uh, importance all the way down here, kind of like that last high value node, which I think is a little bit better seen on the weekly, which we can get into a discussion right now on targets if this thing fully does break like the like the actual consolidation this consolidation right here does break to the downside i would be looking for a quick flush down to about mid to low 2000s as you can see there is very little being done very little business being done underneath uh, 3400 uh, basically holding up the 200 simple moving average which i do like for good confluence because that is you know your traditional investors that's like that's like your traditional long-term investors you know signal for saying fuck it i'm out basically I, I that's probably the best way to relate that idea they're just like fuck it i'm out baby um so again as long as bitcoin's above it you know a lot of those a lot of those hedge funds are going to stay in um if there are crypto hedge funds I, I think that they are um i mean this is probably more more applicable to to traditional markets but uh if if people do see that if 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 a lot of bots do see that loss they're just going to be selling you know long-term positions i'd imagine so yes, of course we're 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 completely above it right now. Thirty four hundred is it's actually coming in just above thirty four hundred. But the second that that, that 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 area gets lost, I'd imagine it's going to be a very quick, very quick move down to you know twenty two thousands ish area. You know mid mid two thousand, just like what we saw over here when we lost a six thousand higher value node right here at a uh, sixty three hundred. It was a quick shot down. Essentially, I mean this was done over the course of two three weeks down to uh, high three thousands, right? But remember, this is in the context of what we're looking at. We're looking at a weekly total chart, so three weeks is nothing in comparison to you know the three years that we're looking at right here. That's relatively quick. And I'd be looking at something similar, you know, if, if we broke 3,400, that's kind of what I'd be thinking. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what's at stake right now. Uh, of course, the market isn't, you know, decided in one day, it's not decided in one move. And really all we're seeing right now, as far as, far as I'm concerned, again, is just massive consolidation for the last uh, over three months now, because it's, yeah, we, we got into this area late November. We are currently uh, mid, oh my God, we're middle of March now. By the way, tomorrow is SIBO expiration, so that's likely to produce some movement as well. I'm gonna guess that we probably do get some uh, so, uh, some nasty bullshit going on. Anyways, I do want to I do want to quickly talk about this. I haven't talked about this in a while, but I do have some new things to be speaking on, I suppose, because um, everyone's talking about the fractal and Here's the thing. While while I do make fun of fractals all the fucking time, because um, you got the fucking fractal squirrels all, all, all going around, uh, there are ways to use other indicators in confluence with that, with that, which actually do produce results. But when you're talking about just straight up fractals, and I really want to separate these two things, when you're talking about just straight up fractals, looking at price action here and saying, okay, so we went up here, we went, up down, we down, we went down there, and then we're going to do the same thing right now. It's like, no. 
that that way doesn't work or at least I don't know anyone who I, I don't know anyone who's actually made it work for themselves because so many times that you'll see you know you'll, you'll see like the Wall Street uh, cheat sheet cycle Mark cycle cheat sheet uh, being posted and it's like Bitcoin did this so we're going down now it's like no you could have overlaid that that uh, that cheat sheet you know a million times throughout this area uh, on the way up as, as people were doing people were doing it, and then the last the the, uh, the 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 last tick the people who did it right over here they're like oh my god I'm a genius and maybe you are but for all the people who got it wrong beforehand, I mean, that's, you know, you see the same people calling it the same, you know, the, the whole way through. Anyways, my point is, is that this area right here is very similar to this area right here. But understand what I'm about to say, uh, as it's not a fractal. Um, so we had the same sort of consolidation that led into both these things. We had a descending triangle right here. We had a descending triangle right here. Once we broke down out of that descending triangle, it was essentially from 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 breakdown to low was about a 52 and a half percent move well from the breakdown of this ascending triangle in 2019 what do we have another 52 53 percent uh move to the downside then after that we bounced up right we bounced up about 20 a little over 20 percent or 23 20, 24 percent over the span of i believe this was 12 to 4, 12 to 14 weeks let's actually confirm this uh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah 10 weeks okay so actually a little bit less and then this area right over here going from bottom to top about 25 percent, so very comparable over the course of a lot longer which you would expect as the mark cycles have progressed and there's more people involved right now but one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen 16 actually so we're actually doing significantly longer which is which brings me to my next point that this whole mark cycle is likely to just take longer in general um but looking at this you know there are a lot of similarities not only that but if we go if we go back to the daily and uh and put on the mvt signal and look at something that is completely you know completely removed it, it's exclusive to price volume and time or sorry it's ex it's excluded out of price volume and time it is the network value divided by the daily transaction value which is essentially a fundamental indicator uh we can go back in time and look at what the mvt signal was actually producing during this drop down right here which this is the area in question once again and if we bring up this this uh this, this pane you can see that uh, it's this area right here where bitcoin essentially dropped all the way down to about a 90 mark or sorry about an 80 marker on the mbt ratio sorry mbt signal well if we scroll into the current times at 2019 where do we get down to on that last drop down right around there right around the 80 ish marker not necessarily getting down into the bottom area by the way below 50 but uh but but getting right into this area where where we kind of found that initial support off of in um in 2014 2015 well you know again looking at something like this you do see that we're likely taking longer. Um, right now, we're taking about one and a half times longer if you were to make a direct comparison, which I don't believe is the right way to be doing it. But what I am looking at is I'm looking at the relation between the higher level moving averages, the higher level resistances, and the overall shape and sh the, the, the shape and implications of that with regards to this price action and how it's operating basically off of a mount major downtrend in consolidating right now. And looking at fundamentals to to also kind of con, uh, secondarily confirm that, and you can see that you know, sorry, going back on over here to um, 2014, 2015, you know, looking at this area right here, uh, Bitcoin did something very similar to what we're kind of seeing right now, where it got stuck around the 21 exponential. You see on the daily, uh, testing it multiple times. You know, they spent about two weeks, two three weeks right around here, um, testing it multiple multiple times, and then once it actually closed right below it. I mean, it actually closed below it a couple times beforehand, but we didn't both open and close below it until right here. Uh, that was that was the full on downside move. So again, looking at some. I mean, you even have kind of like the same trap right here. Jesus Christ, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get called a fucking fractal god damn it um <laughs> sorry about that uh having all my autistic rage is going on today but uh you know you do see the same sort of trap that we saw uh what was it two, oh, like a week ago was it last week or the week before um and then kind of uh, struggling along the 50 and uh, 21 which going right, right on over here you do see the same sort of trap below the 21 gets back above it now we've been kind of uh, fucking around with it once twice uh, three times um so again you know a lot of similarities between here and that is telling me that you know as far as moving averages go these areas are being respected and that is going to be the the probably the 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 next big trigger for an actual move if we actually break that by the same token of the upside we'll be looking at this level right here and again i am agnostic here i you know if, if bitcoin does break above 3930 there's no reason to be bearish in the medium term time frames um there uh yeah I'd, I'd, there i'd have no reason to be bearish in the medium term time frames by the same token, of course, if it does, you know, it, 
I'm not I'm not looking for that. I, I want to be very very clear about that. I I don't think that that's the right way to be looking at this. Um, but hey, if it happens, man, I'll be looking at 4150, 4200. Um, so yeah, all right. So we spoke about that. Um, let's go check out. Uh, let's go check out traditional markets now. Traditional markets having a beautiful bounce just off the area that we spoke about yesterday during yesterday's uh, morning's video. Actually, the whole weekend really. Um, but bouncing off the uh, the the golden cross on the daily total time frame, which very powerful, um, very powerful indeed. Actually coming up all the way, testing the 10 simple moving average of, at uh, 278, which is our next resistance trend line that we were looking at. Uh, also the 236 or around the 236 Fibonacci retracement. So this is where things get a little more interesting. Do we see continuation today? I would really want to see continuation probably. And if we do see continuation, I would say probably a quick ride to about 281. But that has been the area of topping for the last one, two, three, four, five times. So do you take the same trade uh, uh, again there? Well, I'm going to say what I always say. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So I actually would be taking that same trade. I know a lot of people were thinking that when this thing popped up over here, it was going to break out to the upside. But the trade works until it doesn't. And this was a nice move from 281 down to uh, 271, which, you know, that's why opinion not necessary. I do not trade my opinion. I trade technical analysis and technical analysis says it works until it does not. So 280, if, if things do get back up to 281, you know, yes, I, I would probably take the same trade again, but I'd be very, 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 very quick to get out of it. If it does, if it does take out, uh, especially the prior high at around, what was it? Yeah, 280, basically 281 and 90 cents. If, if it goes above there, I would want the fuck out. Um, and, and I mean, that's, that to me would be confirmation that the daily dollar golden cross is going to get played out again, the green 50 and the purple 200 crossing up right over here, which is typically very powerful. Uh, also, you know, also a, a reaction off the, off the 382 Fibonacci tracement, also a reaction off the, you know, the horizontal implanted right here. And we do see that our daily oscillators, our daily stokes are coming down to the neutral zone. I'd like to see this be defended relatively soon if, uh, if bulls are going to take over, but price action is moving up while stokes are moving down. That is, I mean, that that would be a more bullish sign. Uh, daily, uh, whoops, daily RSI right here, just popping back up to test the exponential, bouncing off the neutral zone. So that's that that's a little bit more neutral than anything. I wouldn't say it's, it's neither bullish nor bearish. Or I guess it'd be more bullish um, in the context of that. We have essentially reset uh, after the bearish divergence on the daily total time frame. Daily jewel is completely neutral, literally right. Oh my God, it is right right around 50 uh, the 50 mark so it is quite literally neutral so not too much to make out of that we got to go down to the lower time frames to get an idea and i'm going to guess that the hourly closed pretty damn strong yeah it did uh so yeah next horizontal resistance is at 279 and a quarter you know do i take a trade there do i not take a trade there of course it's not financial advice yeah i'd probably try a trade there but i, I wouldn't be looking too much forward to it um you know uh, prop 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 ugh. sorry about the uh stuttering i know it's really fucking annoying it annoys me too man it's embarrassing but um 279 and a quarter. Yeah, you probably do get a quick scalp off there. But I would not I would not take the second trade off there, <laughs> to be honest with you. I, I'd be very on edge. I really do not like trading against uh, Daily Golden Cross. I'll put it that way. I'd be looking for longs, not shorts. Um, as, as long as we're above the 200 exponential, which is, again, about 270... Yeah, about 271, we could say. As, as long as 271 is being defended, I wouldn't be medium-term time frame bearish. And macro time frame, I would not be bearish until we actually break below this area right here around 264. You can also see this is very visually apparent on the weekly, which so far, weekly having a decent reaction. And again, we, weekly moving average is coming in right around that 271-ish area. Uh, don't want to be too, you know, uh, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't want to be bearish from, that, from this time frame perspective as long as we're above this. And they are, you know, they uh, they are divergent away from each other. The the yellow and the green, which is a good sign. Twenty one above the fifty. Um, okay, cool. So 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 so. I mean, yeah, it also does look like this is printing some 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 kind of a quasimodo, which could it play out? I mean, it, I mean, it, as long as you're below two eighty one, yeah, it's potential. But again, the medium time frame perspective for this guy in relation to Bitcoin would be two seventy one versus uh, two eighty one, which everyone gets taken out first. That's gonna be your next big. Not just medium time frame direction, but probably probably going to carry on over to the to the macro. I mean, if you do break up to the upside, you're going to see you're, you're going to likely see another run towards 290. If you break up to the downside, um, you know 260 264 is the next is the next one in question, and that's kind of like the last of the Mohicans. Alrighty, um, let's go check out. Let's go check out BNB. What's BNB doing? Strongest coin of them all. Uh, uh, weekly is looking good. Daily is looking okay. I think I was looking for a pullback on this yesterday. I think I'm going to be wrong about that. 
Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I am going to be wrong about that. This, this is reaccumulated. This is looking better. I mean, this, you know, th 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 this looks like an, a, a, this looks like a bullish accumulation. Let's see what my trend lines say. Yeah, uh, trend lines say don't be bearish as long as we're above thirteen dollars and uh, ninety cents. If thirteen dollars and ninety cents is lost, though, I would be looking for a move down to about twelve eighty five, and then below there, strong support around eleven, uh, eleven seventy eight, eleven seventy nine. But overall, man, um, let me just make sure my other account's safe. It's good. It's Safu. Um, but overall, I mean, this this looks like it's being reaccumulated right now. I mean, yeah, the move is pretty extended. Yeah, the move is, you know, it's looking like it might, I wouldn't put too much more weight on it. But um, no bearish divergence on a daily just yet. What about a 12 hour? 12 hour, we do have some. Actually, we do have one, two, three stabs. That's typically a bad sign. But hey, man, I I I wouldn't be bearish on this until we actually break fourteen dollars and uh, fourteen and a half cents. CZ doing his job, baby. Get all those ICOs in and about, man. Um, let's go look at uh, Zcash, the real Bcash. And what's he doing? In the context of a descending triangle, not good. Not good at all. Below all major moving averages, definitely not good. We have Daily Stokes also getting way up in here as price action is drifting downwards. I mean, this is just a disgusting chart. Uh, god awful. Absolutely god awful. A little bit of hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point. Um, what about Bcash? Uh, Bcash, very similar, below all major moving averages in the context of a descending triangle. I guess maybe not relatively as uh, as weak, but um, daily RSI, just trending below the exponential. Daily Stokes, uh, headed up right now, so not bad. But again, don't really like this setup right here where it's below all major moving averages. Probably just going to do what the, what the rest of the market movers do. Uh, Tron Cash, having a nice move to the upside, or sorry, not having a nice move to the upside, but having a nice bounce off the support that we've been looking at for the past two weeks. Again, you know the uh, the, the the range for this guy is uh, two seven. Uh, sorry, two point one seven cent as support and two basically two and a half cent resistance right over here. As long as you're between those areas, just consolidation. Um, you know, I, I I do think we've we've tested the support once again. I do think that we get a nice bounce off. We probably bounce up at, at the very least to two point three eight cent, and then decide from there. But uh, for now, it is looking a little bit tired. Daily stocks are technically crossed down. Need to confirm that though with the daily close later tonight. Um, daily RSI not telling us too much. Uh, maybe you could say you could say that we do have a little bit of bullish divergence. So again, I would be looking for a move probably to you know if we are gonna if we're gonna play it a little bit of upside, I would be looking for a move back around here around maybe even two point four. 2.4 cent-ish area that is going to play out again i wouldn't be i wouldn't be like super super bearish i mean i don't even think you get, that you can really short this thing until you can break uh 2.2 cent like officially break you know close a daily dollar below, below there that's a 200 simple right here um so again and you know overall bad chart but it doesn't mean that you can't rally back up in test this area just like we're seeing on the other uh, majors uh neo cash what's neo cash doing uh, same sort of thing, a little bit more resilient off this area, and does look like we're having a good bounce off this area. Uh, next resistance, I mean, the same resistance that we've been looking at. It's been, it's been the same fucking range, 9.35. Nothing's changed here. Uh, nothing's ha nothing changed here at all. Uh, RSI just popping back up to test uh, the exponential as well. Uh, you know, again, not no real strong opinions. What is the jewel saying? Jewel is, wow, again, indecision on the daily, but you kind of expect that in a range like this. We are in the context of a rising channel, uh, however... Uh, EOS Cash, same sort of thing, same sort of thing. Four dollars uh, resistance, support, um, pretty much where we are right now, right around the twenty-one three fifty-eight. What about Ripple Cash? What's Ripple Cash doing? Is still in, is he still in a descending triangle? He is still in a descending triangle. God damn it! Uh, <laughs> you can see that we're below all major moving averages right here, but uh, three three uh, th sorry thirty-one and a half cent is a resistant. It, it is a resistance. If that area does get taken out, I would be looking for a quick move to about thirty-three and a half. Um, but overall, I'd be bearish on this guy as long as you're, especially in the, in the descending triangle, but below 34 and a half cent region. So be a th that's what I'd be thinking about this guy. Uh, let's go on and check out uh, Stellar. Oh, how's Stellar doing? Is he following up that rally? Probably not. It actually came back down. Test support right here perfectly and bounced off that. Not bad. Actually printed a massive uh, shooting star dildo last night and fall through to the downside. I do think that this gets another try up into this area probably. Um, do you have a strong opinion on if it breaks or not though? That's a real question. Let's look at it on a weekly. Uh, I'm curious because we're not getting all that much from a daily. Da daily says it says that we're right at resistance. Yeah, weekly is not looking too hot either. Um, so yeah, that that actually might have been the high of the run. That quick move to 11 cent and then straight back off. Um, I I don't think that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be trustful of this guy. You are going to be printing um, an ascending brownie wedge right here as well. Now, aren't you? Something like this. There we go. Whoops, wrong one. I'm like this guy. Actually, do you want to call that a do you want to call that a rising channel? No, broadening wedge. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. 
typically a bearish pattern. Um, but that, that doesn't mean that we can't grind this area for a little bit of time. This, this area right below 11 cents. Let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. What's she doing? Other top shit coins, uh, 50, 55 and a half bouncing off the 10 simple. Oh, getting all the way down to fit to that 52 target that we've had. Um, again, daily, di daily bearish divergence, I believe has now fully played out probably one, two, three stabs. Actually, you know what? I, I think I take that back. I don't believe that the bearish divergence on the daily has, has, has played out just yet. I think that we're going to spend some more time in this area, though. Um, if we do get another run to $57, I think that that's probably going to be a sell, though. Uh, what is a weekly sign? Yeah, week weekly is a clear rejection so far of the 89. Uh, going back to the daily, you know, I, I wouldn't be too bearish on him as long as he's above $50. I would look to see a test down to about $50 at some point. Um, but as long as he's above $50, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be too damn bearish. Um, if he does lose $50 and yes, I would be looking for a move back down to the low side of the range, you know, probably somewhere right around uh, 44 and a half dollars. But for now, a good reaction off the, uh, off the, off the test of support. And now the game begins once again, 12 actually looking particularly strong. Um, what about Mr. Buterall? Can we check out Mr. Buterall? How's he doing? Uh, 136 and a half again, pretty damn good, re uh, pretty damn good response off this support right around 131 to the same area that we've been speaking about for quite some time. Um, I'm not really getting too much from the from the 12 hour daily. I mean, da I mean the, the 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 resistance areas are the same that they've been. Sorry, I just hit the mic. I apologize about that. Um, 143 and 143 and a half. It looks like is a is a major resistance. As long as we're below there, the medium time frame perspective has not changed. And by the same token, uh, the support that that needs to be held in is 135. Again, I haven't changed these trend lines in weeks. Um, so still finding support along this area. It is looking droopy, is looking, you know, is struggling right around the daily 21 exponential, which you can probably see a little bit better right here, which is also 382. But hasn't uh, hasn't fully opened and closed a dodo below just yet, although it will have a chance today. And as of the current moment in time, it is still below by just a smidge, but long day to go, very long day to go. What do the lower time frames say? Curious what these guys look like. Yeah, four, four hour popping back up pretty healthily. Uh, four hour stokes up as well. I do think that we get some follow through on this as, as well as Bitcoin is, uh, uh, you know, in confluence with that. Uh, Jewel not giving us all that much, although you typically do look for bounces in this area. Let's go back to uh, speaking of, let's go back to Mr. Bitcoin. And what do we got? Yeah, so you can see the four hour just just beautifully popping back up, testing this, uh, testing this broken support um, so far, backing off of it and uh, still below the 21 exponential. But, you know, got to wait for this to be confirmed. Another three hours. It's a long time. Can we get anything off the hourly, however? I want to see the hour, you know, if the, if the bears are going to remain, uh, are going to be going to remain or take back uh, control. I'd like to see the hourly close below the 200 exponential below 38, uh, 49. Um, as long as we're below there, I would, I would say that pressure is on, but you know, personal opinion, I, I per personal opinion, I do think that we work our way higher and probably test 3,900 a share. I think that we're going to, you know, pop that area once again. Um, so yeah, I think that that's probably going to do it for today. You know what? Actually, before I go, let's go check out Dixie. How's Dixie doing? Um, we've been looking at Dixie because Dixie was knocking on the verge of a major breakout. Oh, it's not even loading. You might have to do this dur during the live stream later tonight. Yeah, yeah that's just going to be annoying, man. I, I don't know what's going on with trading you guys. I apologize about that. I really do. I, I know it must annoy you. Um, as it annoys me too. Um, but again, you know, I, I wanted to show some, show, show some correlation between Dixie and, uh, and Bitcoin, but right now I, I think, I, I think the, the, the picture is pretty damn clear. All time frames below a full hour are crossing up on our, on our oscillators. And I would be looking for this to probably pop a little bit higher. The next question is though, how, you know, where, how high does it, how does, how high does this rally get? As long as we're below 3930, I am looking to be a seller. And, uh, I do think that 3900 is very possible. Um, so again, that's, that's going to be the next, uh, that's going to be the next step for the rest of the day for now though, not all that much to do. I mean, unless, unless you just scalped that, that territory right there. Um, at that point in time though, I, I don't think that this trade has all that much edge on it. I, I think that it does work its way higher probably. So yeah, that's what I'm going to leave with you, leave you with right now. A little bit of a late morning today or sorry, early morning today as uh, I struggled for my words. Didn't get enough sleep last night, unfortunately, but I did eat enough ground beef. So that's good enough. Anyways, I want to say, I want to wish you a very happy rest of your um, Tuesday and I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Looking forward to see you there. If not, well, I want to wish you a very happy day regardless and take care.